courage. That's the theme in today's edition of Literacy Corner. It features comparing and contrasting genres. I'm Mr. McCoy. Here it all comes now. A reluctant hero saves a village. An unhappy kid learns a secret that changes his life. How many books or movies have you seen with one of these storylines? Many new stories are actually old stories retold in new ways, and sometimes in a different genre. A genre is a specific category of literature such as poetry, drama, fantasy, or historical fiction. And up first is Poetry by Emily Dickinson. It's entitled, To Fight Aloud is Very Brave. To Fight Aloud is Very Brave, but Gallander I know, who charge with the bosom the cavalry of woe who win and nations do not see, who fall and none observe, whose dying eyes no country regards with patriot love. We trust in plume procession, for such the angels go, rank after rank with even feet and uniforms of snow. What is the theme of this poem? Share with your fellow listener. Up next, Brave soldiers, be listening for how the story approaches the topic of bravery. When Tasha came downstairs early Saturday morning, her father was dressed in full military uniform. His duffel bag was leaning against the front door and his smile didn't seem quite real. When he kneeled down, Tasha fit into his arms like a key in a lock. Remember, he said calmly, that it's my job to protect our country and it's your job to be strong and brave at home. Tasha nodded in agreement, but she could feel her eyes swelling. Some tears escaped, but Tasha knew she couldn't show her father how afraid she was. She would have to be brave for him now and for herself until he returned. So, how does this story approach the topic of bravery? Share with your fellow listener. Up next, Fort Fizzle. Listen for the theme. Chief Joseph huddled with the other Nez Pierce leaders in the shadow of the nearby mountains, listening quietly. We have to fight and defend our people, said White Feather. The white soldiers began this war, not us, and now they are the ones refusing us to let us leave peacefully. They're frightened, said Lean Elk. So are the settlers in Bitterroot Valley. That is why the soldiers built that foolish fort in the canyon. But this is a battle we can win. A battle just means more deaths, Joseph retorted. Better to die fighting than to wait here like cowards, White Feather exclaimed angrily. He looked away. I am not saying we should wait, explained Chief Joseph patiently, but my plan requires another form of courage. That night, Chief Joseph instructed the tribe to pack up their belongings and leave as silently as possible. Then, instead of heading through the canyon, the entire tribe climbed the steep mountain and crossed over a ridge above the fort, following a path barely wide enough for a mountain goat. Several hours later, they reached the valley on the other side and continued peacefully on their journey. By showing wisdom and bravery and braving the mountains instead of the soldiers, Chief Joseph and his people avoided conflict and saved many lives, and the fort in the canyon became known as Fort Fizzle after the battle that never happened. What is the theme of Fort Fizzle? Share with your fellow listener. And now, Ogil's Tear. Kate, Eli, and Juan sat together in Juan's room, glued to the latest issue of their favorite comic book, Gilda the Great. Gilda was strong and fearless, fighting off enemies and performing amazing feats to protect her people from harm. In this issue, Gilda learned that an enormous gremlin-like creature named Ogel was rampaging through villages, tearing down trees, and scaring families from their homes. The trio eagerly turned the page to see how Gilda would defeat Ogel. Kate cleared her throat <clears throat> and read aloud. Just as Kate began reading, a flash of light lit up the room. 
and the pages of the comic book fluttered excitedly. Moments later, Kate, Eli, and Juan found themselves standing beside Gilda in the midst of a mountain forest. I'm so glad you've arrived, Gilda yelled as she raised her sword. We must join forces to vanquish Ogel. But just as Juan tried to process what Gilda had said, he noticed one large tear rolling down Ogel's cheek. Juan said, Gilda, wait, look at Ogel. I, I think he's, um, crying. Suddenly, Eli stepped forward and began speaking to Ogel so softly his friends could not hear. Eli's tone was soothing and he slowly inched closer to Ogel. Baffled, everyone shouted, imploring Eli to stop, but he refused to turn back. Moments later, Ogel dropped to his knees and began sobbing uncontrollably. Eli explained that Ogel was lost and scared and that the creature was desperate to find his family. The group was stunned for a moment, but then they helped Ogel to his feet and assured him that they would help him. What is the theme of Ogel's Tear? Share with your fellow listener. Here comes an excerpt from Before We Were Free, Be Listening for the Theme. Twelve-year-old Anita and her family live in a compound in the Dominican Republic in the 1960s after most of their friends have fled to the United States. Anita learns that her father is involved in the underground resistance to the Dominican dictatorship. In order to stay safe, the girls must keep their family's political beliefs a secret. The night before going back to school, I spend a long time picking out my outfit as if I'm getting ready for the first day of classes. Finally, I settle on the parrot skirt. Mammy made me an imitation of the poodle skirt all the American girls are wearing. But even after everything is laid out, I feel apprehensive about going back. Everyone will be asking me why I've been absent for over two weeks. I myself don't understand why we weren't able to go to school just because the SIM were on our doorstep. And after all, Poppy still went to work every day, but Mammy has refused to even discuss it. I go next door to Lucinda's room. My sister is setting her hair in rollers. Talk about torture. How can she sleep with those rods in her hair? For her outfit, she also picked out her skirt, just like my parrot skirt, but she insisted on a poodle when Mammy made hers. Linda Lucinda, I butter her up. What are we going to tell everyone at school? You know they're going to be asking us where we were. Lucinda sighs and rolls her eyes at herself in the mirror. She motions for me to come closer. If people ask, just tell them we had the chicken pox, Lucinda says. But we didn't. Lucinda closes her eyes until she regains her patience with me. I know we didn't have the chicken pox, Anita. It's just a story, okay? I nod. But why didn't we really go to school? Lucinda explains that after our cousin's departure, too many upsetting things have been happening, and that's why Mammy hasn't wanted us out of her sight. Raids by the SIM, like one we had, arrests, accidents. I heard Pappy talking about some accident with butterflies or something, I tell her. The butterflies, Linda corrects me, nodding. They were friends of Pappy. He, he's really upset. Everyone is. Even the Americans are protesting. Protesting what? Wasn't it a car accident? Lucinda rolls her eyes again at how little I know. Car accident, she says, making quote marks in the air with her fingers as if she doesn't really mean what she's saying. You mean they were... Shh! Lucinda hushes me. Suddenly I understand these women were murdered in a pretend accident. I shiver, imagining myself on the way to school, tumbling down a cliff, my parrot skirt flying up around me. Now I feel scared of leaving the compound. So, why send us to school at all? The Americans are our friends, Lucinda reminds me. So for now, we're safe. I don't like the sound of, for now, or how Linda makes those quote marks in the air again when she says, we're safe. What is the theme of this story called Before We Were Free? Share with your fellow listeners. And next, Raven's Song. Since she could remember, Raven had loved music. 
When she was just a child, her grandfather let her sit in the closet of their apartment and listen to old recordings using strange earpieces he called headphones. Eventually, the precious headphones had broken and her grandfather had passed away. Raven still kept the recordings in her closet, but without headphones, there was no way to play music without danger of a neighbor reporting her to the guards. The guards could arrest Raven and her parents for breaking the music ordinance, and those who were arrested rarely returned. Raven found it hard to believe that just over 50 years ago, music had been legal. She imagined the days when cars filled the street, sweet songs blaring from those things her grandfather called radios. Raven took the floating bus to school that day. In her notebook, she drew five lines with music notes on them. She'd learned to write music. She could hear the notes in her head. Suddenly, she caught herself humming a tune aloud. A boy next to her caught her wrist. Quiet, he said. These days, even humming was dangerous. Sometimes Raven wondered if anyone else sang songs in their head all day. Sometimes she wondered if anyone remembered music at all, or if it had simply died along with the birds and trees and streams. Raven stepped onto a giant moving walkway that moved her briskly to her first class, genetics. There they learned how to manipulate the cellular structure of food so that it could be grown quickly indoors in shallow ground. The class took place in an old auditorium. Instead of a teacher, a movie screen took center stage, flashing information for students to memorize. As Raven sat in the auditorium, she imagined what wonderful musical performances happened there long ago. She kept recording the notes of her song, holding her paper low so no one could see the markings. Lost in thought, Raven began to hum again. The other students turned to her with eyes wide as distant suns, but she didn't stop humming the tune she had written. Raven and her peers felt the vibrations of the music in the air. There was no turning back now. So, what does the theme of Raven's song share with your fellow listener? This marks the end of today's edition of Literacy Corner. Another is coming soon. It too will be equally lyrical.